In this video, I'm going to go over some basics of fixed iron sights on pistols and share what measurements I take and calculations I do to figure out my sight height for my desired point of aim and point of impact intersection distance or zero distance. I will share a simplified equation that you can plug some numbers and measurements into and it will spit out a front sight height for you. I will then show an example of my measurements and calculations on this Mac 9DS I just picked up because I want to replace the front sight. Buckle up for some whiteboard action, hand waving, trigonometry, and algebra, my friends. It's a good day when I get to combine two things that I love, math and firearms. Dawson Precision has a good calculator on their website, but it requires you to put in information about your existing sights and point of impact in relation to your point of aim at a given distance. Then it will tell you the height of the front sight you should order to get the point of impact you want. I'll link in the description to that calculator. It can be handy as uh, height over bore is not required. I'll also link to a couple of great videos by Delta34 about optic zeroing. First things first, I guess, what is point of aim and point of impact? For the purposes of this video, this is what I am considering to be a proper sight picture or sight alignment. Equal height of the posts and equal light on either side of the front post and the rear notch, your target goes here. This is your point of aim. Where the bullet hits is your point of impact. Say you kept the sights perfectly still as you broke the shot and the point of impact is here, but your point of aim was here. Your point of aim and your point of impact are not the same. Generally, we want POA and POI to intersect or be the same, but there will only be one distance that your POA and POI will intersect. I will explain why in more detail later. Next, let's look at windage. This is the side-to-side -side alignment of the front and rear sight in relation to an imaginary line drawn through the bore of the barrel, which is our bullet path, which is the green dotted line in my diagram. We are going to neglect wind that may make the bullet deviate from this path. Looking down on the top of the slide, if we draw a line from the center of the notch of the rear sight to the center of the front post and extended forward, this blue line should lay directly on top of our green line, the imaginary line of the center of the bore. If the sight line is parallel and on top of our bore line, the windage on these sights is zeroed. Let's look at two cases where the windage is off. First, both sights are drifted one way. The sights will be parallel but offset from the bore line. Your POA and POI windage wise will never intersect and the offset will be the same at all distances. Next, either the front or the rear sight is drifted to one side. This means the sight line is not parallel to the bore and your POA and POI will never intersect. And the further away you are from your target, the bigger the offset distance will be. There isn't much ambiguity with the windage adjustment of fixed iron sights. In most cases, you want both your front and rear sight centered over the bore line, like this first diagram right here. Okay, on to elevation. Looking at the side of the slide, let's once again draw a line out of the center of the barrel bore. This is the path of the bullet. At pistol engagement distances, we will make the assumption that there is no elevation drop of the bullet, and this line will be straight. Now we will draw a line once again between the tops of our iron sights like we are lining them up. The front sight is usually a little bit shorter than the rear sight. I have exaggerated this for illustration purposes. Extend this line out and you can see it crosses the path of our bullet right here. This intersection point is where the point of aim and the point of impact are the same if your windage is also on. When engaging targets closer than this distance, your point of impact will be low. When engaging targets further than this distance, your point of impact will be high. That is, of course, until extended distances when the bullet starts to drop off, but we are not considering those cases. If someone is practicing holdover drills, they are practicing compensating for this difference in POA and POI elevation at any distance other than the zero distance of their iron sights or red dot. If we change the height of the front or rear sight in relation to the other sight, the point of aim and point of impact will intersect at different distances from the muzzle. If the front and rear sight are the same height in relation to the barrel bore, the point of aim and point of impact will never intersect and you will have a constant elevation offset. If the rear sight is lower than the front sight in relation to the bore, these lines will be diverging and your POA and POI will grow further apart with increasing distance to the target. 
I'm going to clearly define all the terms we will be using first and how they're measured. Height over bore. This is the distance from the center of the barrel bore to the top of the rear face of the front sight. The rear face of the front sight because that's what we look at when we line up our sights. This measurement can be obtained by measuring the outside diameter of the barrel, dividing that by two and adding it to the distance from the top of the barrel to the top of the slide, and then from the top of the slide to the top of the rear face of the front sight or your front sight height. Sight radius is the distance between the front and rear sight, specifically the rear face of both as that's what we're looking at when we line up our sights. Front sight height is the distance from the top of the slide to the top of the rear face of the front sight. Rear sight height is the same. Generally, sight height is defined as the height of the sight, not including any dovetail or mounting features. So you wouldn't measure front sight height from down here. You measure it from right here. We need to remember to make our best effort to measure the front and rear sight height from a common datum or reference point. Say your rear sight is mounted on an optic plate like this, and I can't measure down directly to the top of the slide. This part of the slide right here is lower than this part of the slide. And so sometimes you need to measure from the top of your slide down to an optic plate and then add or subtract that uh, to a measurement from your optic plate to the top of your rear sight. Some slide tops have actually a slight angle to them with respect to the barrel bore and slide rails like the CZ75 series, and that can throw off your measurements and calculations. Lastly is the distance to our target from the muzzle in yards, which we will multiply by 36 because our other measurements will be in inches. There are three feet in the yard and 12 inches in a foot. This distance to the target is your desired intersection of POI and POA elevation-wise, or in other words, where you want your sight elevation to be zeroed at. Generally, I'm buying taller sights as a backup to a red dot. I sight in all my red dots at 15 yards to keep it consistent across all my pistols. So I want my iron sights to be on at 15 yards or 540 inches if possible. This also keeps my holdover similar between pistols at different distances. Of course, height over bore affects that, but it keeps it as close as possible. Okay, let's get into the trigonometry. Here's a fresh drawing of our sight line and bore line with some exaggerated angles for clarity. You can see I have two similar right triangles. The relationships of similar right triangles tell us that this angle is the same as this angle, and the ratio of any two corresponding sides will remain constant as long as all these angles remain the same. This first triangle is created by our desired distance to the target here and our height over bore right here. This second triangle is created by our sight radius and the difference in height between the front and rear sight. I've drawn this black line up here that shows this triangle uh, as well, so hopefully it's clear. This is our whole rear sight, this is our slide, this is our front sight. Let's define some variables. D is the distance to our target, H is our height over bore, R is our sight radius, and we will call our difference in sight height X. Since these are similar triangles, this equation holds true. We want to solve for x, but we really want to know what height front sight to buy, not just how much shorter it is than the rear sight. We need another equation. Let's call front sight height fs and rear sight height rs. And we need to relate these with our variable x. fs equals rs minus x. Let's uh, count up our variables, what we know, and what we're solving for. d, distance to the target, we know that. h, height over bore, we measure that. r is the sight radius, we measure that. rs is the rear sight height, we can measure or define that if we're buying a whole new sight set. x is the unknown. We want to solve for that in our first equation. And fs, the front sight height, is unknown. And this is ultimately the answer we are looking for. So we know what front sight to order. We have two equations and two unknowns. Yes, that means we can solve it. Let's uh, rearrange some shit and make a substitution. 
the equation fs equals rs minus x can be rearranged to isolate x, and x equals rs minus fs. Let's substitute this into our first equation. So instead of x right here, we're going to have r s minus f s. And remember, we're trying to solve for this. Now that we have the unknown that we want to solve for in this equation, f s, we know every other variable here. Let's rearrange this to isolate f s. The equation now looks like this. Our front sight height is our rear sight height minus a little bit. That checks out. That little bit is our height over bore multiplied by our sight radius divided by our distance to the target or desired zero distance. I'm going to add in that factor of 36 right there that we multiply our target distance in yards by to convert it to inches so it will match all the other units. Here it is typed out clearly because my handwriting is dog shit and the accompanying diagram. Screenshot this goodness and try it out. Let's look at an example on this Mac 9 DS with the optic plate uh, mounted to the slide. You can see the rear uh, sight is a bit taller than the front sight. I measured it. It's 35 thousandths of an inch taller. I rearranged the equation I derived to solve for the distance that the POA and POI should intersect, and it came out to 3.8 yards. I want it to be 15 yards. The other reason I want to swap out this front sight is because I don't like the bright green fiber optic competing for my attention with my red dot. I like my backup iron sights to be all blacked out. With the optic on there, I'm happy with the height of this rear sight, so I'm going to leave the rear sight and only be replacing the front. I will be getting a blacked out front sight from Dawson Precision. This is a uh, standard Novak dovetail as far as I know. I need to know what height to order, so let's take the measurements and do the math. If you do any tinkering or gunsmithing or working on really any mechanical system, I would recommend having uh, digital or dial calipers. You can get ones that will be accurate enough and last you a while for like 30 bucks. First, let's look at our height over bore. Our barrel OD is, call it 695. So punch 0.695 into the calculator, divide that by two. Remember, because height over bore is from the center of the barrel bore. And we're going to add that to our distance from the top of the barrel to the top of the slide. Sometimes this can be more or less difficult to uh, measure. That will be close enough. Call it 125. Now our front sight height, 315. So our height over bore is uh, 788. And in that calculation for height over bore, my front sight height is 315. Sight radius, close enough to six. We'll call it six. Now here's the tricky one. We need to measure this rear sight height from the same datum or reference point as the front sight, which is the top of this slide. And I know on a 1911, the, uh, the bore of the barrel is gonna be you know, pretty much parallel with the top of the slide. We're gonna measure the height of our optic mount call that uh, 110, and we're going to subtract that from the height of this rear sight. Call that uh, yeah, 455. So we have uh, 455 minus 110. So that means our rear sight is 345. As I said, I want my uh, point of aim and point of impact to intersect at 15 yards. So my value for D or the distance to the target is going to be 15 yards. Our rear sight is 345 minus the 0.788 height over bore times our six inch sight radius times 36 times 15. That gives us a front sight height of 336. After I know what sight height would be ideal, I head on over to Dawson Precision and I go to their Novak front sight selection and I want the black front sight. Then I can browse through their height options and the closest one to my measurement is going to be the 330 since these are just kind of, you know, coarse backup iron sights and the rear notch is pretty wide. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, 0.125 wide uh, ramped serrated and it's only 25 bucks. So that's the site I'm going to order the kind of our you know, calculating a theoretical perfect front sight height to get our optimal 
uh, point of impact and point of aim intersection distance. But in reality, we're going to be, you know, limited by what front sight heights are available and the mechanical accuracy of the gun, our accuracy as a shooter, the accuracy of our uh, measurements that we take. Um, so really, this is it, it kind of just gets you in the ballpark and gives you an idea. If you really wanted to nitpick it, you would buy a taller sight and cut it down with a file to exactly the height that you needed. I hope this video was interesting, informative, uh, helpful. You know, this is just what I do uh, when I go to replace sights on my pistol. Uh, if I'm going to buy a new sight anyways, I might as well figure out what the hell sight I need to get it to, you know, impact where I want. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know if you try the equation out. Thanks so much for watching.